Hey, welcome to the entire church. Like it said, uh, we are 100% online, but 100% a church. Uh, welcome, Taryn, our extraordinarily serving tin server, Tyrannosaurus, and um, Chris Manti. And Dr. Anderson is, you know, taking a week off because he, he just had a lot of schooling and work and all that stuff. So we're going to give him another week. Um, and then he says he'll think about coming back next week. So we'll be all right. No, he said he'll be back. He'll be back. Praise God. <laughs> Nothing's happening. Nothing's wrong with the man. He's getting some well-deserved um, shalom, some rest, some Shabbat. And so uh, that's always a good thing for sure. We can both tell you that. Uh, so anyway, we welcome you. We thank you. We love you. We want you to say hello. Where are you watching from if you're on uh, obviously, YouTube or Facebook, that's easy. But especially if you're on our official app, if you don't have it, go get it. It's right there at the top of your screen. Bloop, and time.app. Uh, go grab it and use it. And it'll even show you our live services like here, even on Wednesday when we come on and do prayer services, even on Fridays when we come on and do like Q&A or, you know, open forum, whatever you want to talk about. We talk about Taryn has participated. She can tell you it's, it's a fact. It's true. Yes, the hardest question. The hardest question. She really challenges uh, with those. But that's awesome. It's really good. Hard, I think just way too general. Like, I ask, like, a very general question. You're like, well. No, they're pretty, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Uh, I got to think about it. got to think about it. I don't have a great easy answer. Praise God, Tom Anderson. Hi, Tom. From Australia. Praise the Lord, brother. Thank you so much. And uh, obviously, if you're on endtime.church, the website, you can chat as Tom just did probably. He's either on the side of the app, right from the side of the app, right on the video itself. Super cool feature because one day we're not going to get to use YouTube, Facebook, and or whatever the heck Twitter calls itself. Uh, just change the name today, Taryn. That's why. Um, you can change it to Tweeters. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's much even lamer than anything you could imagine. It's just the letter X. Very lame, yeah. It's like Prince or something. You're just going right to the symbol. Um, but anyways, all of that stuff is, is at the whim and the whimsy of godless companies and, and weird individuals. Um, now, we're a little weird, but we're Christians here. So we're always going to let the gospel stand and let discussion about God's word and things in current events and stuff like that as it relates to to Jesus continue. So that's why the app exists. Please go get it and use it and use all the different features and parts to it. For example, there's merch. You can get shirts, you can get hats, you can get mugs to support the ministry or just join the church because we are one. Uh, and it's all laid out there, exactly what we believe, our statement of faith, what is um, you can expect as far as uh, what leadership will provide and what is expected of a member if you do that. So it's all laid out there. Uh, if you choose to do that, please do it. And the music, yes, uh, we have an entire read-along for the book of Revelation by this one here. But I love I love using the app um, most of the time because it's just prophecy people, people who are into Christianity, people from different countries um, getting together to talk about like the things we're interested in of God. And it's so cool. It's it's not even like just, yes, you should get the app because in future times we may not have other social media. We may just have this app. Right. It's so fun on the app to connect with people who are just into prophecy and passionate about Jesus, like coming back and returning and all of the posts that people do, you know, just so great. It's the whole, the whole point of the app is just to be our community, our little microcosm. And then, and then as times get worse and worse, we're going to have more people joining us. Because it will have to happen. Makes sense. Hello, bond servant. Bless the Lord for you. Um, yeah, she's one of the ones that can uh, I can attest how useful it is. Uh, and you can basically say, "Hey, what's going on in your life?" And this is, you know, this is hard. Or you know, 
have any advice here? <laughs> I'm running into some issues um, just out, out and about. So it's very useful. Totally agree. Uh, use it in all the ways it can be used for. Uh, and courses and training, by the way. One last thing I just wanted to mention. We have courses set up directly on the site. They're all totally free, of course. The membership class that I mentioned, if you're wondering what we believe here at End Time Church, we lay out not only what we think, but all the popular views of what we would call eschatology, the end time stuff. So it's all there in a training module for you. Again, take it as you like. It's no particular time. You just take it as you can. The Spirit of Truth class, uh, which is very in-depth stuff from uh, Tim Gill, tremendous uh, teacher there. Um, there's an ethics, a sexual ethics class called Clean. Again, totally free, totally the way we uh, we want to be serving God is um, the right way. Amen. Duh. Right? We don't want to do it our own way or in the flesh or any of that stuff. So, Holy Spirit, we need your leadership. We want you here tonight. We're going to get it. First of all, if you have any prayer requests at all, now is the time to do that. Just go ahead and put it in. And right after our time of worship with music, we're going to sing whatever we want to because it's an original tune. And you just pray and praise that way and then we'll come back and pray together and then we'll get into the lesson uh tonight the teaching is kind of weird it's sounding now that i read it is it prepare for the great what is that what is that uh and all those all those permutations we're gonna we're gonna find out i think it's gonna be worthwhile to you uh mary non i see man, bless god i see prayer requests excellent uh keep those rolling in folks uh so we can get to that and then we'll get to it tonight Amen. So we're here to be the church again. Please share this. Can you share this video? Can you do me a favor? Can you just share this? Oh, what is it? We need nine, no, six more subs, subscribers on our YouTube channel to get a thousand. That'd be pretty rad for a, for a, a startup. Nobody's ever done this before. Uh, heard of it type of thing. Uh, get a, get a, a thousand subscribers on YouTube organically is totally awesome. So please, if you can, if you're not subscribed, then YouTube, just go ahead and do that, but share the video. It'll just go out and out and out. It's amazing how it can just roll and roll and roll. Um, so long as we're allowed to use this thing, we're going to, we're going to use it. So please do that. Thank you very much. And we're going to get into the worship set now that uh, Taryn has appropriately entitled Watchmen. Listen, you Watchmen. Watch. That'd be a good thing for Watchmen to do. Watch and listen. So if that's you, Let's sing along together to the Lord, and we'll be back to pray together and then learn together, hopefully. Amen? All right. Praise the Lord. Be back in a moment. Let's do this.
Yes, friends, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Taryn, so much for that, as always. Beautiful. Um, Father, we come to you around the world, literally, tonight. You provided this platform, this medium, this technology for your church to connect throughout the earth, literally. And that's what we are doing tonight. We're being faithful to your call, watchmen on the wall, and teach us your word tonight. And as we come to you in prayer, let our prayers ascend to you like a sweet incense, God. And any tears that we are crying, collect them in your bottle. You may catalog every time we've come to you. And that we may continuously go back and back and back, even if we're not getting what we're asking for, Lord. You told us to keep coming to the Father again and again and again. So give us that heart and desire and persistence to do that. Mary Non from across the side of the country that we're on here says a friend of mine, grandma died last week. Pray for him. Yes, Lord, we pray for this one. This acquaintance, Lord. Um, grandmother, I'm sure was very dear to him. Let him know that you are in this, that you have uh, anointed everyone. Hopefully she was a believer, Lord. Um, but you have measured out our days, every single one. And that he would see you in this and he would know again, hopefully she was a believer and maybe he would be as well. If not, may he see you tonight before it's too late that he may be saved. Um, and that your desire is that we all should, even though we should die in this flesh body, that we would live again. We would be resurrected and reign in the kingdom of God that is coming in Jesus name. We pray also for our friend Tom in Australia, God. We pray that you shine your light in our hearts, indeed, all over the earth, in his church and in the world, making the truth clear to all who seek it. God, you said you may be found, that uh, the day is here where we can work for the Father's kingdom. So shine that light to all who already know you and who are born again, who need that that reassurance and that um, that touch, that loving touch that you provide, whether it's supernatural or just in our heart, and we could see even in a dream or a vision or the love of a friend that you're right there with us and that you are more than able and adequate to save every soul we encounter that we'd be faithful to plant that seed God in the love of Christ Jesus he would mold us into his image and do things the way he did it that light would shine brightly Lord renew us renew that spirit within us Holy Spirit you are here you you have been given to us in equal measure the same the same spirit that rose your son from the dead lives in your children now even here, even tonight, even those who are watching this right this second, empower us, flow through us, the energy of God, the power of life. Flow through us now, God. Bond servant is praying for her youngest son, recently restored to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ethan is his name. Thank you, God. May he be a mighty warrior in the spirit for you, and that restoration may never be forgotten by him. And may many come to know you through him and his actions and his faith. Empower us all with the faith of the Son of God. Give us that belief of a young child, even if we've never had it before, even if that's all we've ever had, Lord. Use that tonight in Jesus' name. And every prayer that's being said and that is not written, bring it all before you. And those who are uh, submitting prayers after this is happening live, God, we know you are the God of every time and space and minute and molecule. You can address those needs at any time, God. We come together as your church to ask in your Son's name, Jesus, Yeshua. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. All right. Let's do it. Preparing for the great. So we've been at this. I don't, I never, every week I think this has got to be the last, 
the last time we're going to do this in this series called end time prepping, right? Every week. It's like, this is it. There can't possibly be anything else. Um, but here we are. This is now week 10, the 10th installment of this. Not, not on purpose promise. Um, but I just, when, when I'm setting out to, to pray about this and thinking, first of all, what do I need? What would I need preached to me, right? Because everything you are hearing every week, whether it's, whether it's Pastor Anderson or any of our guests or myself, I know for sure it's been preached to us already by the Holy Ghost before we bring it to you. So we're not presumptuous. God forgive me if I've ever if I have ever have been. Um so part this is this is for me as well, okay? Believe it or not. This is the great all these greats that are coming. I don't think I'm ready. I I think it's incredibly dangerous um and arrogant for any Christian at all. I don't care if they're a pastor, any type of leader, ministry, church, denomination, whatever, um, to say, I'm ready for Jesus today. You, you may be settled in your mind and your heart is right and your faith is good, so you're ready to die tonight and meet Jesus. Okay, I'm not questioning that. Uh, but I am talking about the 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 multi um tiered event we call the second coming of Jesus when that all plays out and the, all the years and things that it will we have to go through to get there because we know imminency is not true he can't come tomorrow they Jesus cannot come tomorrow the antichrist cannot come tomorrow that's how far out we are still so there's a lot to get there and i don't think i'm ready i don't think i am so i'm not sure how anybody can say they are please help me out okay uh because as we're gonna see i just started making a list because um, you know what there's a lot god is not trying to fool us right it says all the time god's not trying to fool us he's not trying to mess with our minds he repeats things like we do as parents. So I'm sure if you're a parent or if you're a child of a parent, certainly your parent may have told you things over and over and over, right? Again and again and again, because you just wouldn't, you just can't get it. You just wouldn't listen or you just, it wasn't getting through. No. It wasn't getting through until like the hundredth time. Right? Four, five, six, seven times. Usually it takes a bunch, okay? So we're going to see this again when the phrase the great is used in the Holy Bible. It's almost always, I think it is always, talking about the return of Jesus and the days before. Something great is always coming. It's always building to this great, great, great thing. Before we get going here, I see a question from Jeff, good friend Jeff. Uh, the series in Genesis is still ongoing. Well, no, not at this time. I mean, we didn't finish the book per se, but we did a whole bunch of um, sessions on it. Um, if you go to endtime.church slash live, by the way, you can see the playlist right there. Of course, we have a Roku channel. It's all on there and the Apple TV channel. It's all, all of our services. <laughs> Every teaching we've done is on there. Um, but if you go to endtime.church slash live, you'll see the um, sessions that we've done on Genesis and Revelation and the Rapture and Daniel, and now with end time prepping. All the Genesis has 15 sessions. I just checked. So we've got 15. Those are basically an hour long plus each. Check that out. So I don't think it's ongoing, but I guess you don't. You can never tell. Jeff says, is Revelation done? Yeah. Yeah. That was last year. We had 19 sessions on that. We went through every, I believe we did every word. Um, the the first maybe first three chapters. I think I think we hit we hit every line in the book. 
and hopefully went in depth enough to to show um what the spirit was trying to say so and as jeff says thank you brother being led by the spirit okay go check that out so let's do tonight's which is end time prepping preparing for the great okay here's the deal here is the list of the great in the scriptures and they all happen to be in the future i'm sorry we can't it's too i i wish i could say you know what half of these uh are historical we don't have to pray about it do anything about it you know uh read or study or share it by the way y'all y'all can i speak to you all i hope everyone watching this right now everybody i've got i'm looking at the stats right now we've got folks on youtube at three different youtube channels we got our end time church site we've got our end time church app people are watching it's everywhere all y'all are teachers god is calling you to be a teacher of his word we don't have enough okay yes study under end time church please please do that be a home church or whatever satellite church call it what you will i don't care but you have to be able to give a um defense to teach and to know why god teaches certain things and to defend your faith against attack okay and i'm not talking physical you know that what is the great here's some of the great you should know as a prophecy student hopefully you are one the great tribulation we know that one right the great tribulation or the great trouble you know it's the same thing i hope when jesus talks about and he uses the phrase the great tribulation he's also talking about the great time of trouble that the old testament talks about for israel number two the great deception or the great even deceiver and we're going to get to the scripture back up on all of these i promise it's not going to take all night but i want you to see the the overall pattern the great apostasy we should know that one right the great some people or some bible say falling away the great falling away fine um a lot of folks love to concentrate on the great holy spirit outpouring the great outpouring of the spirit in the last days right we all Love that one. Well, there's also Babylon the Great Mystery. Babylon the Great, Mother of Harlots. There's also something called the Great Multitude, right? In Revelation, we see them. The Great Multitude. There's also coming a Great Mourning. Mourning, M-O-U-R, like sadness, like a funeral mourning like for their only son, morning, right? Morning, great morning, great deliverance or salvation, great deliverance. That's also promised. Remember, these are all future events. Great deliverance and culminating with the great and terrible day of the Lord. Um. Yeah, there's the there's the there's the rest of it. Okay. Anyway, great and terrible day of the Lord, and the the point of it all, the point of it all, is the great King, Jesus, the returning, conquering Judge Himself. The king, the great king, sitting on his throne, right? Those are all the great things. And I really want us to understand why they're all in the future. Not only are they all in the future, they're all billed to bond servant. I see your question. I'm going to get to it in a, in a minute, okay? Um. They're all building and and getting more and more mm, prevalent, extreme uh, in your face. Um, like, for example, we have tribulation now, don't we? 
do you have persecution? Tri- tribulation means trouble or to be persecuted. We have that all over the world for Christians and the Jews, honestly. Right? So we have that now, but it's not the great one. We have there are people of Jacob, Israel, who are going through trouble now, but it's not Jacob's trouble. Understand? We, there is deception now for sure. Right? There is the deceiver is out there for sure, but it's not the greatest deception. Even him being the great deceiver, something happens at the very end where it has never happened before. The great There's apostasy today. What's apostasy falling away from the faith? Uh, Christians turning their back on Jesus and not following Jesus anymore, becoming other faiths or no faith. Of course. I just saw, I'm not going to, I don't have it here on the slides. I should have. Um, there's a new um, survey, a, a, a poll, a, a whatever you call it. Um, let me see if I can grab it here. Put it on my phone. Yeah, there it is. This is from Gallup. Gallup, the polling company. There it is. Americans believe, and this is obviously just America, but Americans' belief in the five spiritual entities since 2001 till today. So 22 years. This is since 9-11, right? It's, this is today, today. When we're saying, is there apostasy? Let's, let's be extremely generous. Let's be extremely uh, gracious and say, and I know this isn't true. Believe, trust me, I know it's not true what I'm about to say. But let's just say for the sake of argument that everyone who says they believe in God actually believes in the right God, the God of Israel, and is born again, is a follower of Jesus Christ, born again of the Spirit, all that stuff. I know that's not true. But let's say it is. Let's just say. In 2001, the people who said they believe in God was about 90% per Gallup. They take these po- this poll every year. Or every couple of years, at least. 90%. Today, 2023, that number is 74%. Something big is happening. Okay, and this is just one country. And I know it doesn't, you can't drill down that far with this little data, but to say, I believe in God that has gone down from 90% to 74 in just 22 years. That's apostasy. Even if only a small percentage of them are actually born again believers, some of them are in here. You got to think. You got to think. So there is apostasy happening right now. By the way, these other things are interesting. God is the by far the most believed in thing uh, the whole time. The devil is always the lowest. He went from, looks like, uh, about 65% at the most. Now he's down to 59%, believe, 58%, 50, something like that, believe in the devil. So that's a is you right there, isn't it? Anyway, the point is, it's happening, but it's not the great one. It's not the great apostasy, okay? There's Holy Spirit being outpoured on everyone who's born of the Spirit. Everyone who, right, baptism of the Holy Spirit, that's happening. Um, but it's not the one that the prophets talk about. Babylon, okay, whatever you think Babylon is, maybe it's here today, maybe it's not, but the point is mystery, Babylon, the great mother of harlots, in the in the way the Bible talks about it, is not here yet. Multitude, what's the great multitude? Well, something end timey is going on there because it's in Revelation 7. We'll talk about that in a second. The great mourning, what we know, if you know that's Zechariah, that's other things that when, when that's the Jewish people, when Israel as a nation mourned over the fact that they rejected Jesus. That certainly has not happened. Once in a while, yes, of course, praise God, we get 
uh, Messianic Jewish believers who come to faith. Please, more, God. More, 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 many more. But as a nation, it's not going to happen yet. So that morning is not happening. Uh, del great deliverance. Same basic issue. Again, one by one, sure. But it's not happened yet. The day of the Lord, is that here? No, I don't see how you could ever say that at all. And of course, Jesus has not returned. I don't care what preterists will tell you. Jesus has not returned in any way, in any form or on any date. Okay? Right. Um, before we get to the crescendo uh, aspect of it, let's see what bond servant and someone else was asking what is a good what is a good way to explain the chaos of today seeing that we are not there yet crescendo uh i'm gonna cheat on that uh bond servant and go to my next slide um way too many are thinking the great trib are, are about to be etc thank you that is that is what the spirit is saying to you tonight end time church if you think you're part of the end time church or not, guess what? These are the end times. And if you're a believer, you're the church. So that's you. Um, way too many of us are thinking we're in the great tribulation for whatever your reasons, whatever your personal opinions or your favorite teacher told you so or whatever. It's not true. Or it's right around the corner. It's right around. It could be tomorrow. The Antichrist could invade tomorrow. This is a very, not only is it false, obviously, okay, but be that as it may, we all get things wrong, but it's dangerous and unhealthy for you and your spiritual condition. Heck, even your physical health. To, be, to believe that this is the worst that's ever going to be in the history of the world. I, I think you need some perspective. Okay. <laughs> Number one. Um, but the point is you're not helping anything. You're not helping yourself. You're not helping the church. It's a, it's not a good witness. It's a false witness. Uh, Jesus is not being glorified because it's going to be evident sooner or later, whether it's a day from now or a week from now, a month from now, a year or whatever, that it did not start when you said it did. Um, that hurts the witness of the church generally. Okay. It's just not healthy. Or, or even that fact, you know, like she's about to say it, or it's about to come any minute. Now this is it. You know, this could be it. Blah, 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 being like on the razor's edge. That's not, again, that's not how God puts it in the Bible. That's not how he lays it out. It's certainly not how he wants us to act when it does um, occur. Right. <sighs> Yes, too many think that. We have to be get agreement on this. Many Christians believe in realized eschatology. Amen. That's what we would call preterism. In other words, it's already happened. It's already realized. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about that, uh, MS, for sure. Zechariah 12, for sure. Yep. Give me a few minutes there. We'll get there. Okay. So my point in all this is to zoom in on a couple of things. We see all these factors. Let's zoom in on these two scriptures real quick, and then we'll get to the um, why it's all important together. It's First Timothy chapter four. The Spirit expressly states this is the um, this translation is the complete Jewish Bible. So watch this. The Spirit expressly states that in the Herod Hamayim, the last days, the final days, some people will apostatize from the faith. This isn't sugarcoating it. It's that's what it means. Some people will apostatize from the faith. You can't apostatize from a faith you don't hold. You can't fall away from a place where you never were. Right? So, yes. Apostasy is to leave Christianity. You were a believer and you choose to leave. That's what it is. Some people will apostatize from the faith by paying attention to deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come from the hypocrisy of liars whose own consciences have been burned or seared, or literally what it means is branded like 
you know, like on a horse, you know, or even God uh, help us. We used to do this to human beings. You brand them to say, I own that. So Satan is actually branding the spirits or the minds, the conscience, excuse me, consciences of former believers with demonic doctrines because he now owns them. That's a last days thing that's exclusive to the last days. Right? That's what it says. Look at Jude, who also says something very similar in verses 17 to 19. You know, Jude only has one chapter, right? Recall the predictions, Jude says, foretold by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. For they said to you, in the end times, there will come scoffers or mockers propelled by their own ungodly desires. These people are divisive, worldly, devoid of the spirit. These are people making fun of those of us who are waiting for Jesus. Again, why does it say in the end time there will come them? Haven't they been here all along? Right? Can you catch that? Okay. Yes, it's it's been here, but yet it's not compared to what it's going to be. Yes, there are mockers and scoffers, but there's something specific that the apostles themselves told us beforehand about the end times, that the Spirit himself told us specifically about the last days, about the demonic, satanic powers and the apostasy of the church coming to an extreme level. And it's important enough to mention it multiple times in the Bible, which was written 2,000 years ago. Here, what is happening? Okay, I, I think it's best expressed in what we call, whoops, a crescendo. Crescendo is a musical term. It means a gradual, steady increase in loudness or force. In a musical sense, it's a passage characterized by such an increase. This is the crescendo part of the song. The performance of a crescendo passage, a steady increase in force or intensity. The climactic point or moment in such an increase, the peak. There it is. Okay. When the Bible says the great, the great, it means the climax of the entire history of that thing. It never gets worse than this or higher than this or more climactic or forceful or intense. The tribulation of the saints of God and the Jewish people will never come close to that um, point that we see at the end, the climax of it, the peak. And in music, and I, I'm not going to get into all this, but I re- I mean, God speaks through music. There's no doubt. I think creation is a work of music. I think, anyways... Maybe I watched Oppenheimer too closely. I don't know, but like the the creation of God and the and 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 the physics of it all, quantum mechanics and all that stuff, it really speaks to me as this is how God actually creates and builds and builds and builds. So using a musical phenomenon, I think is right. I mean, I think it's exactly what's happening, and that's how we can say in the last days it'll be like this. And even though we're seeing, like Bonservant says, like uh, MS is saying, uh, like watching to the end here on YouTube, um, you can see things, we can feel things in the spirit, and we can even witness and say, oh, man, this is what the Bible's kind of talking about, right? Um, Here it is, but it's not done. This is not it. (laughs) It's, It's here, but it's not the crescendo. It's not the climax. It's not the peak, and we have to be ready for that. We have to be, even if it's not us personally, if it's our children, okay, if it's the next generation, whatever it is, 
um, it's going to be the we can't even imagine. If we think this is it now, we are really deceived. So what I wanted to do at this point, before we put a nice bow on this thing and get to the scriptural backup for all those greats, is to have a little fun maybe, but to demonstrate what I mean by the crescendo of the end times events. I'm going to actually play a piece of music right here that's called a crescendo um, from one of my favorite pieces of music the last 30 years. It's truly one of the great pieces. And if, um, if you're a movie fan, you may recognize it. But this is, in the musical form, this is what the end times will be like. And even if you think it's loud or crazy at the beginning, wait. So watch this. Listen. that's a crescendo now if if anything if anything guys we where are we at we are in the very beginning of that piece maybe maybe okay is that does that drive the point crescendo we're building, 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 building to the great, to the great, to the great, to the great. When God says something is the great, I'm almost afraid about that level of greatness. He says, I right, I am great. This is great. It's great. Whoa. I'm a finite human being. I I don't know much. Um I think my life is the most extreme, right? We Americans think this must be it or, or whatever. Or we can't believe all the horrible stuff that we see on the news or on our, on our social feeds or, or talking to our families or going out to the store and see the LGBT everything or whatever. Guys, this is nothing. Nothing. All right, here's the scriptural, some of it, some of it. Okay, this is no way is this complete. Where do we find the fact of it's the Bible that says the great tribulation or the great trouble? Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Jeremiah specifically says the time of Jacob's trouble and there shall be none like it. But he, Israel, Jacob, shall be saved at the end of it. Daniel 12, 1. Since there was a nation of Israel until that time, never again shall the there will be such a time of trouble. That's exactly what Jesus says in Matthew 24, verse 21. This is the great one, the great one. Revelation um, chapter 7, verse 14. This is the explanation of the great multitude as they came out of or they died in the great tribulation. You should know that one. That's easy. The great deception or the great deceiver himself. Matthew 24, 24. Uh, let's pull that up. I have the book here, but I'm too lazy to open it. <sighs> Goodness, forgive me, Lord. Get down there. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. False messiahs, false prophets, great signs and wonders. That's great deception, guys. Like, to have a deceive, uh, something that's a deception now, okay, well, you have a, this religion of deceiving this or this politician is deceiving that or this maybe this false false wonder over here is deceiving this group or this false prophet over here this new whatever it's nothing nothing compared to what is coming jesus is insistent because they're actually legit miracles that you cannot explain you cannot explain it away that's the level of the deception. Second Thessalonians chapter two, 
Verse 11, of course, is the same thing. Let's take a look. Every kind of false and evil deception against those who are perishing, God sends them a strong delusion so they will believe what is false. That sounds pretty insane because not only are they being believing the wrong things, but God himself is making it happen. You better have your house in order. You better have your oil taken care of and filled up in that lamp. You better have taken care of business and being ready for Jesus before this great stuff starts happening. Otherwise, God's going to get in on it and pour it on you. Revelation 12, verse 9, of course, this is the great deceiver himself when Satan is cast to the earth. The great old serpent. It's called the devil and Satan. When he comes to the earth, he's going to have great wrath because he knows he has a short time, that same short time of the great tribulation, of the great apostasy, of the great everything you see here. The great apostasy, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, up the page, says what? Let no one deceive you in any way. Don't be fooled. That day will not come until there is a great rebellion or apostasy against what? Against America? <laughs> against Israel? No, against God, against Jesus, against Yeshua, against the Christians will turn on Jesus. That's what it means. The great rebellion comes, and the man of lawlessness, the Antichrist, is revealed, the son of perdition. Okay, that's the great apostasy. Yes, there's apostasy now, but not the great one. Because it's tied together with this Antichrist character. 1 Timothy 4 and Jude, which we just we covered earlier. Okay, that also tells you the last day's apostasy, right? Right there, those. The, now, okay, give us something positive, Pastor. All right, fine. The Holy Spirit outpouring of Joel chapter 2, verse 28, and Acts chapter 2, verse 17. But wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Didn't this already occur? Hmm. Welp, no. Because it says in the last days, after these things, God will pour out his spirit. What does Joel chapter 2 say? The whole thing. Not the whole thing, but the, the point of it. Whoops, let me pull it up. Since you asked. I don't know who did. But hopefully someone did. Like, by the time you get to 28, we'd had a whole bunch of stuff happen. Didn't we? We had a whole bunch of three uh, trumpets actually were sounded now by the time we get down here. After all this, then after doing all these things, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men dream dreams and your young men see visions. In those days, I will pour out my, my spirit even on servants, men and women alike in those days. After all of this, the first 27 verses of Joel chapter 2. Do we have to read the whole thing? Blow the trumpet in Zion? Return to the Lord, rend your garments. The earth quakes. The locust army comes and rushes into the city like chariots rumbling over mountaintops. These things happened before. These things happened in the book of Acts. Like fire, they devour everything in their path. A flame behind them. The land looks like the Garden of Eden, but behind them there's only desolate wilderness. Nothing escapes them. The army, it will be full of dreadful day of darkness. The day of the Lord is coming, is near. Indeed, it is near, verse 1 says. Blow the trumpet in Zion's sound. This, thank God for the worship song today about being a watchman. Blow the watchman have to know what time it is and how close it is. We can't just see something on the horizon five miles off and say, it's here tomorrow. It's here right now. They're going to break down the gates. What do you mean? They're still five miles away. That's, that's, the, <laughs> that's the, the point of the watchman, to give an accurate account. What do you see? Like he would uh, ask the prophet. Right? Well, geez, that's what we're doing. Blow the trumpet at Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land shake with fear. What land? Israel. For the day of the Lord is about to come. Indeed, it is 
near and then all that stuff. And then after these things, Holy Spirit is poured out. Now, that's interesting, isn't it? I'm not going to get into the going off on this, but I would recommend you go to our Daniel study, Daniel chapter 10, especially. Um because it ties right into this. Why is the Holy Spirit outpouring only at the very, like this great time, this time of greatness, this time of the great tribulation, the time of the great apostasy, the time of the Antichrist, the great deception, because it's all has to do with each other. When the deceiver is cast to the earth, Satan and his angels are thrown out of heaven. Why even mention that? Because like you see in Daniel, when the principalities, when there's angels between God and you, there's interference. You can act, God can actually send help and they can be delayed. That's what Daniel says. 10 says he, I was delayed. Well, there will be no more delay. The prayer to God and the help from heaven is instantaneous. The Holy spirit will be on fire, but that's only after these things reach the great level. Okay. I'm not saying it doesn't happen individually. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. What, you know, here and there I'm saying as the great one, we're looking for the revival, revival, the great revival. That's not coming yet. And it's only uh, to me, if you keep in context, it's only around Israel anyways, because it says the land they're coming here on the land. All right. Anyway, Babylon, the great mother of harlots, Revelation 17, 15. That's where the title is. It's mentioned a couple of the times in Revelation. And Jer I put Jeremiah verse 50, verse 9 as well, because, again, this is an end time Babylon situation that it's not talking about historical Babylon. It's not talking about even a, a um, worldwide system. I know great brothers and sisters who think otherwise. Uh, it's not talking about America. It's not talking about a, a, a world belief system. It's talking about something very specific to Israel and nearby. And that the, this great army from the north hates her and wants to destroy her. We know that from Revelation as well. But go look at Jeremiah 50. There's a great multitude in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. Also in Revelation 19, 1, we happen to forget sometimes that that same great multitude is asking Jesus to come back. Okay, Mystery Babylon is taken care of. Time for Jesus to come now. That means the Mystery Babylon period has come to an end. Now there's a great multitude. What is the great multitude? Why are they in heaven? Well, it's not because they were raptured. All right, go check out. I guess I'll do it. Go check out Revelation chapter 7 in the NLT translation. Where it says, after this, I saw a vast crowd, too great to count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language. Every nation, too great to count. This is the great multitude, standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. They were clothed in white, white robes, and held palm branches in their hands. Well, last time we talk, heard about white robes being handed out was to the martyrs in Revelation 6. And they were shouting with a great shout, with a great roar, salvation now comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the Lamb all the angels, all the elders, all the living beings fell before their throne. They sang amen. And then one of the 24 elders asked me, who are these clothed in white and where did they come from? So he said, I said to him, sir, you're the one who knows. He said to me, these are the ones who died in the great tribulation. Revelation chapter 7, verse 14, NLT version. Read it. These, because this is, a true translation. These are the ones who died in the great tribulation. They have washed their robes in the blood of the lamb and made them white. That is why they stand in front of God's throne. So the great multitude cannot come until the great tribulation comes. And we should know. I'll, I, I'm not going to put it out there, put any pressure on folks here in the chat, but who knows how long the great tribulation lasts. Go ahead. Just type it in. Somebody just type it. I know y'all are smart. But the, this is the point when we all say, oh, the great multitude in heaven, it must be all the saints from all uh, whatever, or these are the ones who were just raptured. I hear this all the time. That's not what it says. And that's not what it means. You get to heaven when you die, okay? You get to heaven by dying. Thank you, Mary Nunn. Spot on. Boom. Three and a half years. That's how long the great tribulation is. 
That's how long the great deception will be here. That's how long the great apostasy will last. That's when the Holy Spirit outpouring can happen. That's when mystery Babylon rises. That's when the great multitude in heaven can be assembled. Great morning. Revelation, excuse me, Zechariah chapter 12, verse 11. Very famous. Probably just read that as well. This is, of course, the Jewish people, and this is the point of all prophecy. Let's be honest. The, the, the Jesus coming, obviously, is the ultimate uh, end result, but why do all things these things happen especially? I will pour out on that day. The lamentation in Jerusalem will be as great as the lamentation of the plain of Megiddo, the great mourning in the valley of Megiddo. Uh, Armageddon happens in the Valley of Megiddo. The great mourning is by the Jews who now realize Jesus is the Son of God. He is the Jewish Messiah. They must mourn from him, for him like their only son, because he's God's only son. Imagine being a parent and have only one child. One son specifically, because this is, you know, especially in most of, throughout history, this is where your posterity went. You can't marry him off to another family. Some other, when he gets married, he would join your family. So to be that, to lose your only son is to lose your, your entire family's dead. And of course, him who you love. That's the great morning. Matthew 24 30 also um, says that as well when it says. Of course, you know what Matthew 24, 25, this is prophecy student central reading. When the sun, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, all the tribes of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man arriving on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. That's great morning. Deliverance. There is a great deliverance. The, the term great deliverance actually is comes first in Genesis 45, 7, where it talks about Joseph um, revealing himself to his brothers, and they're all sad, and oh my gosh, I can't believe this all happened to you, and you were thrown in prison, and you were accused of rape, and you were, you didn't, you know, you were separated from our family, and now all these things happened to you. He's like, don't, don't, don't feel bad. God used this for a great deliverance. Not only did he um, promote me in the kingdom of Egypt, but he, he provided a great deliverance for two nations, a Jewish one and a Gentile one. Jeremiah 51.10 also talks about the deliverance to come. And of course, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3 says something very interesting as well, which is, what makes us think we can escape if we ignore this great salvation or great deliverance that was first announced by the Lord Jesus himself and then delivered to us by those who heard him speak. The great deliverance, the great... Let's be real. This is the salvation of the world. When you say I'm saved, when you say I'm looking forward to, you know, like the, I'm, uh, the salvation of God, uh, Jesus is, that's what his name means, right? The whole thing. This is pointing to our resurrection. When he does appear in the clouds, incumbents in great glory and power, and everyone mourns, well, we won't because we're one of his children and people, and we will get our new bodies. That's our deliverance from sin and death. Amen. And then, ultimately, what? The great and terrible day of the Lord. Matthew, excuse me, Malachi chapter 4, verse 5, the ending of the Old Testament. That's what it's pointing to. All the prophets are pointing to that day, the day of the Lord. It's great and it's terrible, okay? Depending on which side you're on, that's what it's going to be. And, of course, now we're back to Joel chapter 2. Excuse me, verse 11 also talks about the great day of the Lord. Excuse me. And then finally, Jesus himself, the great king, talks about a bunch in, in the Psalms. In Jerusalem is called the city of the great king because why? Like when he came into the city, when they say Hosanna, Hoshiana, uh, blessed is he who comes in the name of Yehovah, the, or in Luke it says, blessed is the king 
who comes to Jerusalem, right? That's what they're saying. He was fulfilling. Jesus himself is the great king. Jerusalem is the city of the great king. Luke chapter 1, verse 32. Um, Gabriel, the angel, who is 100% reliable, by the way, if you're thinking of what he has said over the years, says to Mary what? He will be great, talking about Jesus, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor, Father David. David's throne is in Jerusalem. It's over Israel. He is the great King Jesus himself. And then finally, I want to point out Matthew 25, verse 31, because that's the um, end of the teaching tonight and by Jesus Himself, when he gives us the signs of his coming, it ends basically with what? The exhortation that the king is coming. When the king, when the son of man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will then sit on his glorious throne. That's the ultimate. That's the what we're looking for. That is the great end of the matter. So let's... If we're, if we're thinking we're ready for Jesus, if we're thinking we can handle this or we're thinking, you know what, this must be the great tribulation right now, or this must be great, you know, mystery Babylon where I am, or this must be the great apostasy, look at all those things, okay? And remember, all still future, all concurrent, concurrent, does that help? Concurrent, same time. That when God says great, just what I mean in the beginning when I said he, he's not trying to confuse us or send us in a, on a chasing after, you know, secrets or details somewhere else and separate out everything. He's not. When he says the great, it just means it's all the same time. It's yes, it's the greatest. It's, it's crescendoing. It's building. It's getting louder. It's getting intense. It's there's never going to be anything like it again, but they're all coming together. All of it is pressed up to the max 10 level volume 10 together. You can't have the great tribulation without the great apostasy. Or the Holy Spirit being poured out or mystery Babylon or the great morning of Israel or the great terrible day of the Lord. It's all in the same period. The short time. That's why Satan is so ticked off when he gets cast out of heaven, because it's almost over for him. He knows he's got to hurry it up and kill all those Jews. And if that doesn't work, kill all the Christians, because that's his only hope. Because God made promises that the Jews and the Christians, basically, will never be wiped out. Otherwise, his word is false. Whew. All right. Uh, please, MS says, please comment on my earlier comments. Okie dokie. This one, um, Kuki and Zomi, tribal Christian people in South Asia. This, are you talking about like Indonesia, South Asia? Um, already facing a great tribulation. They're being raped and killed right now. Yeah. And yes. And many others. The predicament looks like an end time scenario of the saints. I don't doubt this at all. This is this is really no different than what's happening in Central Africa right now, um, or in parts of the Middle East, or in Saudi Arabia, or you, uh, China. Still, I guess it's not as bad right this second in China as it was a decade or two ago. But Turkey is ramping up persecution as we speak. Um. All the Malaysia, Indonesia, all those South Asian places, and definitely in Africa. I mean, it's yes, it's it's coming up. The volume is being turned up. And how how much I think your point is, and I would agree if it is, that it's not gonna get really any greater for these people who are already facing um insane levels of physical and spiritual persecution for their faith in Jesus. That's right, but it's a it's Anyone who's faithful is now going to be confronted with this choice. Either get persecuted in that way, like raped and killed, starved, whatever, or ditch Jesus. That's where it's going to go for all of us. We're all going to have to face this. 
And that's not to say, you know, the one Christian is better than the, than the next or anything like that. It, no, but yeah, it's happening in places, but it's going to be everywhere, but especially in the apple of God's eye, the center of the story is always focused on Israel. That's why the hatred of the Jews is always there. Because, yeah, the devil hates the Christians, and persecution is just always going to be here for us. But at the end time, it really centers around, are we standing up for the Jews? Because that really ticks them off doubly. You want to hit hell twice? Be a faithful Christian and stand up for the Jews, even if they don't like you, the Jews, I mean. Even if they don't believe. I'm not talking about believing Jews. Mary Nod says, even in Genesis, God only said it was very good over in Revelation. It's called the great. Well, okay. That's kind of, I'm not laughing at you. That's kind of funny, clever. Uh, when, when he made the creation, it says it was good or very good. Made man. Okay. But the great, well, the, I wouldn't say great doesn't necessarily mean a good thing. Not like it was good. Like, oh, it's great, you know, great in size, great in scope, great in intensity, just great in the old fashioned way of saying great, great meaning just very big and large and loud. Um, that's Manti. Can you do a sermon series on the book of Zechariah? or some of the minor prophets in the future. Maybe. I have to ask the Lord about that one. Um, that could be. It's worthwhile, for sure. Zechariah is meaty. Maybe. Amen. The restoration of all things, Acts 3.21. Yes, thank you. Right. And we should want to... We should want to... Um, we should want be very desiring of that restoration of our bodies, restoration of Israel, restoration of the earth itself. Talked about that what two weeks ago now. Um, the creation itself is groaning to get restored, and that all happens at the same time, right? When these same events play out, and we overcome with our faith by the love of God. Um, Yes, with the with the armor of God in place, but never with the heart of stone or using the enemy's tactics ever. You know, even if you think you're you're hitting the enemy with the enemy, that's not how it works. You know what I mean? Okay. Not Indonesia. Okay. Sorry about that. It's thinking South Asia, that's where my mind goes. Um Anyways, yeah, I'm not familiar with those with those tribal names. Sorry about that. All right, guys. I think that is pretty much sums it up. Please, please, please share this. Please join us. If we have blessed you tonight, please understand this church is 100% brought to you by your tithes and offerings. This is not free. What you're watching is not free to do. This is my full-time ministry. Um we go on faith for my household. We go on faith to share this not only every Monday, but now every Wednesday and every Friday um, and to be obedient in that. And we want to gather the church throughout the world. That's our vision. That's what we want to do. Um, 24-7, somebody's available. Again, the app is the best place to do that. If you want to connect with me, yeah, there's an email down there if you want to do it that way. But again, the app is the best way. We want to connect with you no matter where you are in the world, no matter what your background is. It doesn't matter if you're born again. We are in this together, even through this suffering that's going to come and all these great things. We will always proclaim Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. That's what we're trying to inspire. That's what we're trying to grow here. We grow each other in our most holy faith, like Jude would continue on to say, um, yeah, we see ourselves as a forerunning church, getting out there in front of things, spirit-led, of course, multicultural. Uh, we hope that there are many races involved in this church. Multi-background, that means Protestant, Catholic, non-Christian, whatever, wherever you come from, doesn't matter if you're born again. 
believer in Jesus and you're my brother or sister, you're our brothers and sisters. And so we want to get with you and minister to you and be ministered to by you, right? That's the church being the body together through discipleship. We want to plant churches, digital churches and physical ones in homes throughout the world. That's our vision and our goal. Okay. Ah, India. Oh, I get MS now. I'm so slow sometimes, brother. Boy. Yes, praise God. Absolutely happening in India. No doubt. No doubt. Keep those who are suffering for the gospel in your prayers, everybody. Okay? But let's be as one to know that these great things are coming, and we're not ready, but that's okay because the Holy Spirit is ready, willing, and able, and the Father is very desirous that he get in equally yoked, bride for his son amen so that is what's going to happen eventually one way or the other so until next time folks love you so much for taryn for dr anderson and everyone else here at the end time church christopher manti says until next time we love you more importantly the lord loves you no matter what